Okay, so we're going to move to the part, the exciting part of our Green Chemistry Connections. And it's my huge pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Edson Grandizoli. Edson, he is the Education Coordinator and Ambassador of the Circular Movement. He's also a biologist. He has a master's in ecology and a PhD in science and education. And he's also a, postdoc he, and a postdoctoral fellowship of the Advanced Studies Institute at the University of Sao Paulo. He specializes in circular economy. He's a UNESCO consultant. He's a speaker, a speaker and director of Reconnecta and Schools for the Climate in, for the climate movement. So with all of that, Edison, please take away your amazing presentation and tell us about the circular movement that we're really excited to learn more about. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Hello, Juliana, Natalie, and everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. I don't know where you are in the world. And I'm really, really glad to be here to talk about the circular movement. Uh, please excuse me, uh, I'm going to share my screen. I have a brief presentation. Please just give me an okay, Juliana. That is perfect, Edson, thank you. Great. Well, my mission here today is to talk a little bit about the importance of education for circular economy and how the circular movement is collaborating to bring to different people and institutions this very important subject for our present and also for our future. Uh, so to, to start, I would like to make an initial, uh, an initial and very relevant question. Why and maybe how circular economy would be important in the classroom considering especially K-12 students uh, in, during the, all the basic education. Uh, please keep this question in mind for a while. We are living within a linear paradigm, a linear economy. It's made up of a chain of production, consumption, and disposal that has been proven to be really, really unsustainable. We extract a huge amount of resources from the planet as if they were infinite. The treatment of these resources and the production of goods are still stages in which we have a large amount of waste. Society values consumerism and product, products remain in our hands for less and less time, what we used to call programmed obsolescence. This logic has generated a growing amount of waste and the planet does not have the capacity to metabolize all of it. So it's clear for me, we urgently need to change all this logic, all this linear logic. And what's the proposal? The circular economy presents a very interesting alternative, changing the logic from linear to circular through the valorization of different R's. I'm sure you have heard about these R's. Rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, remanufacture, repair, recycle, among others. The idea behind this logic is to keep materials circulating longer, extract fewer resources from nature, of course, generate less waste, and contribute to the regeneration of natural process. And above all, it's very important to stress that the participation of all social actors is vital for a more circular economy. To stimulate the transition from the linear to a circular economy, the circular movement was born in 2020. The circular movement is a, a colla collaborative ecosystem that aims to unite companies, governments, NGOs, and people who are interested in building a world without garbage. We are building together the largest open education initiative for circular economy in Latin, in, in Latin America. So the heart and the soul of the circular movement is its online platform. 
please visit our platform on movimentocircular.io. There you can find free educational materials for consultation and free download, including 40 hours of, of curricular and extracurricular activities and 11 hands-on activities about circular economy. Uh, I, I will tell you more about these materials very soon. We also have a map of initiatives related to circular economy. If you guys have uh, a project or a program, you can visit our platform and upload your initiative today if you wish. And of course, we carefully curate news about circular economy and produce exclusive contents about it. So please uh, take, take a break, take a while to visit our online platform. Well, the circular movement uh, configures itself as an educational and a cultural movement. Considering education for circularity as a priority, the platform offers materials that ensure information and training for everybody who wants to know more about circular economy, in particular free courses and dozens of infographics covering different topics. Both of these materials are, are offered for, for the purpose of teaching and learning. In addition, the platform also provides materials for educators, this is very important, who want to work on the topic with their students. To this end, we have produced different lesson plans that can be freely downloaded and edited according to the needs of each group and institution. The lesson plans for uh, elementary school, K-12 in Brazil, uh, we say basic education, address topics that are extremely relevant and, di and that dialogue with the school curriculum. They are food and nutrition, plastics, consumption and consumerism, and of course, the several different opportunities that emerge from a new and desirable circular era. Just to give an example, uh, I just selected the lesson plan. Can we use plastic forever? This is a great question. <laughs> this lesson plan uh, is for 13, 14 year old students. All lesson plans have an initial technical sheet that shows the main features of that particular plan. This helps a lot of educators when choosing the plan they want to work on with their students. And furthermore, all lesson plans are formed, uh, consist on four stages, exploring, investigate, finding a solution and sharing. This arrangement encourages students and educators to explore different themes in partnership, to investigate deeply their reality and their territory in order to identify and propose practical solutions to different local challenges. And finally, but uh, at, at, at last but not least, to communicate and inspire others. This is a very important structure. Uh, this is a very interesting arrangement once it stimulates protagonism, partnership between teachers, students, and community, and of course, proactivity. Well, now that you hear a little bit about our platform and our materials, let's understand why it's so important, it's so necessary to bring circular economy into the classroom. Number one, understand the connections between the natural environment and human activities. This is possible through the concepts and precepts of circular economy. Build, build a more systemic and critical vision of the world and societies. Number three, identify the potential and the opportunities emerging from a more circular economy. Number four, unlock creativity and proactivity to solve collective challenges. And the last one, number five, stimulate, stimulate and foster co-responsibility. This is a very important future feature uh, when we're talking about circular economy, co-responsibility. 
So uh, I want to thank you again for the attention and the opportunity to be here today with you. And there is my email in case anyone wishes to continue this conversation in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juliana and everybody. Hey, awesome, Edison. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I love these slides too. They're very nice. <laughs> Thank so, you very much. <laughs> okay, I'm opening the floor for questions. Do you have any questions for Edison? Thank you, guys. I'm just reading the, the chat now. Thank you very much. You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> I could come back sometime to talk more specifically about circular economy, all that circle, talk about design, talk about trash, talk about garbage recycling, and the importance to change uh, our view, not only economically speaking, but to change, to change our view cu culturally speaking, about economy, about the transition of linear to circular economy. No, that's pretty cool. Right? So I do have a question if anyone um, is not jumping in, but do you have, like you talked a lot about the K-12 resources that you have on the website. Do you have mm -hmm. anything for like more for universities for more um, like higher education, like resources mm -hmm. on the website? Well, we have a lesson plan dedicated to, uh, to companies. So th there are some dynamics, some activities for you uh, to to take care to uh, to uh, to to work with colleagues in companies. But I think I just think we, we have never tried this. But the lesson plans for high school, I think they are really applicable in a high in a high in a in the higher education situation. So if you guys would like to take uh, take a shot on a plan on high school, it would be wonderful to hear from you if it, if it works for you or, or, we, we, or we would really like to, to prepare uh, more specific material for you. <laughs> That's amazing, Edison, thank you so much. So if anyone else has any more questions, it's fine. If not, Edison, he just left his email. So you can feel free to reach out to him. And I think this is a wonderful um, opportunity for us to collaborate. Okay, so Cynthia has a question. Uh, so Cynthia is asking, Edison, do you have any strategy to reach the schools or is the engagement organic? Yeah, it's the second option. Uh, the engagement is really, is really organic. We have some schools and some universities making partnership uh, with the circular movement. Uh, but it, it's very, it, it's very, it, it's wonderful to see how this topic around uh, circular economy attracts different audiences. So we have some schools. We we are always looking for uh, some universities to be partner, uh, be partner with the circular movement. So please, if you guys are at UNESP or universities uh, outside Brazil. Uh, please contact me so we you can we can think the best way for you to be part of the circular movement. <laughs>